That's it. We are officially lost. We should have never followed that blue jay. Had I known you were talking about a bird and not my boy Vladdy, I would not have followed you. We're never gonna make it back in time for cookie week. Wait, wait. Do you smell that? Cookies. Yeah, peanut butter crunch. That way. Oh, what else do you smell? Bruno's cologne? Yeah. Something else. What? What? Drama. Oh, what was it? Tell me. Who started it? Was there butter involved? Does someone have a secret family made out of gingerbread? Last time. The dough feels like a little pillow of love. It was a bread bonanza. Anything can happen. Oh, my God. And Camila's bread-winning combinations... It's really sweet, but I love sweet things. Heaven. ...earned her star baker. But some bakers couldn't master their dough. Bread's not even gonna be cooked. This dough is not exactly as fluffy as I was expecting. And it was Sydney. Too many moving parts to be able to enjoy any one of them. Who had to go. I'm rooting for every single one of them. This week. Cookie week. Woo. The competition is piping hot. I'm piping for my life here. As bakers face a painstaking signature. Okay, I gotta stop shaking. Are thrown for a loop in the technical. Come on. And take cookies to a new level. Go big or go home. In a demanding showstop. Week definitely gave me a boost of confidence. And it's cookie week. You guys ready? I'll aim for it to be my week. <laughs> That's the aim. Good luck. My affirmation in the tent is I am worthy to follow my dreams and manifest beautiful cookies. <laughs> It's cookie week, which means three challenges of scrummy cookies. We kick things off with a signature challenge that'll make you masters of royal icing, embroidery cookies. Where the cookie base acts as a canvas for intricate icing artwork created by flooding, piping, and brushing. Bakers, you've got two hours to make a dozen. On your marks. Get set. Bake. Cookie week. I'm excited. Like, really. <laughs> I started my baking journey with cookies. It's my origin story. <laughs> I'm a bit of a cookie monster. It's going to be fun. Today is all about cookies and art, two of the things I'm passionate about. Embroidery cookies are carefully piped cookies that it looks as though a needle and thread have passed right through the cookie to create the design. A lot of piping. A lot of piping today. Embroidery cookies is a test of patience and skill. So we're gonna see how the bakers react. Can they still be creative under pressure? Everything is depending on timing today. Ah! I really need to get started on my dough because piping's going to take a while. The base for their intricately piped embroidery can be any type of cookie. I am making blueberry sugar cookies in any flavor. I'm doing a Negroni cookie, which is inspired by our honeymoon. We've been married for nine years. We spent about a week along the Amalfi Coast, and we drank a lot of Negronis. Andrew commemorates that special time with Italian-inspired cookie tiles flavored like their favorite cocktail. The biggest challenge might be that a Negroni is often a little bit bitter. I just wanted it subtle, right? Like, you bite into the cookie, you get a hit of the orange, you get a hit of the pink peppercorn. Mm. Mm. I hope you like it. <laughs> I am making cranberry lime rosemary cookies. I am using hibiscus rosehip tea leaves. Hopefully it doesn't taste like potpourri. <laughs> Niv's floral tea cookies with pomegranate icing will take shape as a decorative rug. India is one of the largest producers of handcrafted rugs, and then the second one is Persian. So those are like both my husband's culture and mine. It's a special event when we get a new rug. <laughs> I am working on the dough. I'm about to roll it up a bit. Ah! Very sticky today. I'm going to roll them pretty thin because I like a cookie with a good snap. Uh oh. Shoot. Too thin, and now okay. I need to re roll it. So, it's is okay. that something you can feel that it's too thin, or is this? Yeah, just... I kind of go by feel, and um, <laughs> and then I pray. And I, pray I, a do, bit. I love the. <laughs> <laughs> Candace is rolling with a batch of lemon basil cookies to honor the women in her family. So my mom's a circle because, like a compass, she kind of guides us in everything she does. So, and then we're just square. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with the peacock shape. Uh, 
Okay, I can't. I need a steady hand. You can do it. You can do it. They are slightly rustic, but that's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> oh my gosh, this cookie cutter. Isn't that cute? I have uh, big raucous tea parties all the time with my quilting friends. Yeah. And this summer we're planning on doing a tented one outside and wearing dresses and hats and everything. Can I get an invite? Sure. It sounds exactly sure. like what I want to do on a summer <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> Kathy is serving up embroidery and watercolor techniques on a full tea set of Earl Grey cookies, including the pot. You know there's a time constraint here. There's a what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These are black cookies, so it is impossible to tell when they're ready. I am reconsidering a lot of my life choices right now. <laughs> here goes that and... Okay. Now I'm making my royal icing. I don't like royal icing, to oh, be quite honest with controversy. you. Controversy! Scandal. Controversy! <laughs> scandal, scandal, drama! <laughs> Renier is bringing the drama with his vibrant sesame and tahini peacock cookies and a royal icing with geranium water. So it's used in a lot of uh, North African desserts. Oh, wow. It is very floral on the top, but it's got a little bit of a citrus it note does. on the end. Wow, that'll be really interesting. Camila is also going floral. Right now, I'm making my hibiscus icing. Hibiscus gives it a beautiful color as well as flavor, so it's kind of two for one. Camila's vibrant cranberry lime cookies are inspired by the cumbia, Colombia's national dance. I have this image of like swishing yeah, skirts, exactly, right, exactly. and a wide brim hat. That's exactly what it looks like, and we all were made to dance it at some point in our lives in school. It's a really fun dance. I'm not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a better baker than you are a dancer. For sure. Okay. Why did I go with black? Oh, looking okay, a little brown on the one, but I'm glad I made two. This is great. No one's stressed. We're all having fun. Bakers, there is one hour left. Oh my god. First, I am going to pipe the borders of my cookie. Bakers can opt to either flood the entire cookie. It just creates like a nice, smooth surface for your designs. Or they can pipe intricately right on the cookie. This looks like a delicious mess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is always how the kitchen looks at my place. Okay. And my partner was very relieved for me to leave. <laughs> Loic hopes to turn his mess into a chai blueberry masterpiece, inspired by textile designer William Morris. His patterns are always symmetrical with elements of nature. I know it's an embroidery challenge, but are we using an actual needle here? Yeah, I'm using it to feather my royal icing and create those oak leaves. Embroidery cookies are all about special techniques like brushwork. This is just food coloring, a little watercolor. And intricate lace-like piping. Okay, I gotta stop shaking. This is why you should not have coffee in the morning before this. Doing this kind of art is supposed to be sort of chill and soothing. Mm -hmm. When you're doing this at home, do you have someone over your shoulder being like, hey, what are you doing? What are yeah, you doing? actually, I what do. Are you doing? I'm hungry. <laughs> Heather's cocoa and clove cookies will have plum decorations to honor the memory of her beloved Oma. World War II, like we lost everything. When she came to Canada, she planted another plum tree like the ones that she left behind. And her favorite thing to do was just to sit there watching us play. And I think I'd give like just about anything to just sit down with my Oma and listen to her stories one more time. Bakers, 15 minutes left. By now the royal icing is a royal pain in your hands. <laughs> royal paint in your hands. Whew. I'm using my left hand now, because my right hand is exhausted. <sighs> I'm legit going nearsighted. <sighs> Old age is setting in with the back. I'm melting. I'm like the Wicked Witch of the <laughs> West. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love being near your workstation. You're my tent mom. Actually, no, Heather's the tent mom. I'm the tent mom. Oh my god. I'm the tent auntie. <laughs> I have approximately five minutes to work on each of those. Did you uh, factor a time of a host coming in to kind of bug you as you do it? <laughs> yeah, I did. You have two minutes, 42 seconds remaining. Oh my god. Uh, gotta focus. 
I'm really pushing it. I'm ignoring the nerves. Oh my god. Hopefully that looks like a heart. Oh my gosh. <sighs> I enjoy decorating cookies when I have time to decorate cookies. <laughs> There's no way I will finish all of them in time, so I have to make some compromises. Bakers, you have one minute left. No. I've never been so focused in my entire life. <gasps> oh my God. I am piping for my life here. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Ooh la la. Thanks. Bruno and Kyla will now taste the baker's embroidered cookies. Hello, Andrew. Hello. How are you? Beautiful. It's cookie day. Yeah. <laughs> Your cookies look like Italian tiles, but some of the cookie have some roughness in the flooding. Mm-hmm. Wow. Honestly, I was, I was nervous for you making a Negroni <laughs> cookie because everything I love about a Negroni is that bitterness, but yeah. that pink peppercorn does it in just That's the good. right way. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we asked for embroidery, and this is over the top in a good way. Okay, thank yeah. you. <laughs> in a really good way. Okay, I'll keep yeah. breathing now. Yeah, it's cooked to perfection. I like the richness of the cocoa, the hint of coffee. Okay. It was such a clever idea to use the peacock to create your whole design. I think the most impressive part here is how shiny your icing is. But the edges could have been a bit cleaner. Mm -hmm. Using tahini really brings a nice richness to it. Geranium water it was a good idea. Is this your first time? It is. It's not the last. <laughs> <laughs> what you have achieved here with the watercolor, it actually looks like ceramic. This is incredible work. And then even in the ones that don't have the flooding, both versions look beautiful. It really does taste like tea. Mm -hmm. mm, very crumbly, very buttery. It makes me want to have a cup of tea <laughs> with it. Camilla, you can see the movement in the skirts. Gorgeous. And great colors. The fuchsia is actually just the hibiscus. Wow. Then there was a little slip. There's a wind. That wind must have been stronger. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Cookie is very crumbly, very crunchy. The bits of lime zest just pop in your mouth. Your cookies look so delicate. I love the way you wrote the word love Thank here. You. I think maybe just with time constraint, we got into a little bit thinner yeah. love at the yes. end. I guess love changes over time. <laughs> the cookie could have used more time in the oven. But the bits of lemon and the basil, it really invites you in. This was such a creative idea. You've given us all the pieces to make the rug. That's a very nice texture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's almost tropical. It's not potpourri. I was just about to say it's anything <laughs> okay, but potpourri. Good. Knowing William Morris and seeing what you've accomplished here with the acorn motif and the oak leaves, it's beautiful. Thank you. And to see that such precise work came out of such a big mess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The blueberries really come through. It's an exquisite looking cookie, and it's an exquisite testing cookie. Thank, Thank you. You. <laughs> you can't imagine how happy I am right now. I think this is my best signature and probably my best bake so far. Oh, I felt really proud of myself for that one. I'm just going to wipe my CV, and I will only have the line, Bruno and Kyla said my cookies were perfectly baked on there. Hey, hey, bakers, welcome to your Cookie Week Technical, the only week where everything starts to crumble. It may not actually be that bad. Now, before we say goodbye to our judges, do you have any words of wisdom for our bakers? Waste not, want not. Ooh, well, let's not waste any more time. Judges, you are now dismissed. Goodbye. Take care. 
All right, bakers, for your technical challenge, we're gonna hop all the way to Algeria for some kak nakash. The kak nakash is a shortbread-like cookie filled with spiced date paste and crimped on the edges decoratively. The judges want you to make 12 of them. Bakers, your date with destiny is in one hour and 30 minutes. On your marks. Get set, bake. bake. Oh no. <laughs> the bake is a cock nakash, and that's all I know. <laughs> I've eaten it, certainly not made it, so hopefully I don't disappoint anyone in my lineage. Kyla, these cookies bring back so many sweet memories. My grandma was born in Algeria, and when I was a kid in France, she would take me to the Algerian-owned corner store, and I would grab five or six of those kak nakash. But they look kind of hard to make. The dough is oily and crumbly, so it's not easy to roll and shape, and then create that beautiful pattern with pinching it. The date filling is so rich, and the orange blossom water, the cloves, and the cinnamon, this is delicious. I have no idea what it looks like, but once I start putting things together, it'll start making more sense. I'm gonna start with the dough. Baking powder. I need an egg yolk that I'm gonna crack. Salt. As always, there's a twist. Ooh, they don't see how much orange blossom water. Very mean. It's a very powerful ingredient, so I only started with a half teaspoon. They can taste like soap if you put too much. Okay. All right, what am I doing? Uh... I'm gonna keep working this in very gently. Let's see what happens. Andrew, how is it going? I'm working on the dough. I'm kneading it together until it's soft and slightly greasy. I think we got the greasy. Okay, that's half the battle. So you seem like you're in good spirits with this one here. Yes, Alan, that's right. <laughs> I'm in very good spirits right now. <laughs> Happy with that. Well, my dough is done. Letting that rest while that's happening, I'm working on my date paste. These are my jewel dates, which are the jewel of dates. They are gonna get pitted. One more, I forget. Adding some cinnamon and cloves. I'll add a half a teaspoon and then taste. They'll have to use their instincts again. Come on. To decide how much spice and orange blossom water to add. Go big or go home. With the filling made, the bakers will need their math skills to portion it evenly. 12 even pieces. 12 even pieces? Uh, okay. I don't have a calculator. <laughs> I studied finance. I should know this. I'm just going to wing it. 226. Qu'est-ce que c'est? When I have to count students on a field trip or count logs of dates on a baking show, I have to do it in French. <laughs> And would you date me? I would love to, Alan. Thank you. <gasps> One hour, bakers! Mm. I am measuring out my dough requirements. It asks you to divide your dough, but there's no way you can achieve the length that it's asking for. And then I'm supposed to cut it into rectangles? 17 by 42. Bruno said waste not, want not, and I think that means we're not gonna have a lot of extra. Like, our measurements have to be really precise. It is kind of stressful. Roll it. Seal it. Join the two ends together to form a ring. Fitting one end inside the other. These are piddly little things. I don't know if I just didn't roll it out enough, but I ran out of dough. They're all gonna be different sizes. With the ring shaped, bakers will need to figure out how to crimp the dough. I have never seen this tool before. It's a squishy tool. I used something similar for my eyebrows. Uh, maybe means something like this, I'm not sure. I've seen my mom use this. Not the easiest thing on the planet. It's like torturing it. Oh, no. While this step seems to be crimping everyone's style, one baker misses it altogether. Okay. 325. There we go. How long does these have to bake? 12 minutes, because that's what feels right. 
What part are you on right now? The almond paste, almond paste. which will become flowers. Okay, that sounds yeah. pretty. Combine almond flour, egg white, orange blossom water, and pulse until smooth. Add a few drops of food coloring, few drops, whoops. Fun, fun, fun. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. 10 minutes, bakers. Bro, why aren't they baking? The cookies will only get brown on the bottom. They look pale still. And should not be flipped. Oh my god, they are never browning. Hot, hot, hot. I'm gonna bake these as long as I possibly can. Bring the water right to the last minute. Oh gosh. Bakers, you have one minute left. Oh my god. You're not the most uniform cookies. I guess they'll have to come out. We're here, and we're just gonna give them something that tastes good, I hope. They look golden brown, just like me. Ah. Five, four, three, two, one! That is time, hands up! <laughs> Great job, bakers! Great job! Please bring your Kaknakash up to the gingham altar and place them behind your photo. Bruno and Kyla are looking for 12 identically sized cookies with a golden brown base and evenly distributed date filling. Our first baker, there is an attempt to be cramping. And they look fairly uniform. Great job on the filling. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. very smooth, mm -hmm. but the dough could have used a bit more cooking time. Moving to our second baker, they do look a bit inconsistent, very pale white on the top but a beautiful golden bake on the bottom. That's what we're looking for. It's a really nice flavor on the filling. Nothing is overwhelming. Moving to our third baker, right away you can see it's quite overbaked, but the cramping is quite nice. It's just inconsistent. I would have liked to have seen a little more of the cinnamon and the cloves. Moving to our fourth baker, very consistent, but it looks like they might have been flipped in the baking. That's an excellent ratio of filling right there. That clove, it just invites you right in. Moving to our fifth baker. Something didn't go quite right here. Given that they're all different sizes, I think it would be almost impossible to have a consistent bake. And we can see the thicker one is slightly underbaked here. Unfortunately, there is almost no spice yeah. in the date filling. Moving to our sixth baker. First impression is really close to what we're asking for. This one's a bit heavy-handed on the orange blossom water. You kind of get that perfume in your nose. Moving to our seventh baker. They look very consistent, very uniform. However, there is no cramping. Look at that filling. That's evenly distributed. Exactly the way we want it. Beautiful. And finally, to our eighth and final baker. Well, at least we see some crimping again. Some issues with the dough itself and very, very pale, so they definitely needed more time in the oven. The more you manipulate a dough like this, the tighter it's going to get, so it becomes chewier, and that's what's happening here. Bruno and Kyla will now rank the cookies from bottom to top. In eighth place, whose is this? Niv. You went a little off course, but kudos to you for finishing what you started. In seventh place, Andrew. The dough was overworked and he needed more baking time. In sixth place, Renier. Candace is in fifth, Camila is number four, and Kathy's in third place. So in second place, whose is this? Loic, if you had crimped, it would have been perfect. And in first place, Heather. If you haven't flipped them, they would have been perfect. It feels like overwhelming and crazy. Like I just, I didn't expect it. But it's like having a pop quiz on your first day of school and you have no idea what the course is. <laughs> That's the best way to explain a technical. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I feel like the bakers really found their sweet spot with Cookie Week. Right out of the gate, Heather and Loic and Kathy have done really well. Is there anyone so far who has struggled a bit? In a signature, they all did well. Yeah. But in a technical, that was a different story. We had Niv on the bottom, and then once again, we're seeing Andrew and Renier struggling with technical challenge recipes. So there's a lot riding on this next challenge. At this point, we really can't have any unforced errors. Bakers, this week's Showstopper Challenge will see you take cookies to the next level. And the next level, and the next level, and the next level, and the next level. And, and are you broken? No. Bakers, you will be making a cookie layer cake. Now, your cookie layer cakes must be at least four layers and have a combination of tasty fillings. You have three hours and 30 minutes on your marks. Get set, bake. bake. Another showstopper. We're doing a cookie layer cake. Like a layer cake, but cookies. <laughs> I don't know why no one's thought of these before. <laughs> Cookie layer cakes are actually something we see all over the world. I'm really looking forward to seeing just how dynamic our bakers can be. The flavors need to be delicious, the layers need to be structurally sound, and the whole thing needs to be really impressive. Today it's the cookies that I need to get right. They need to be baked enough that they can support all the other layers and fillings. If it's underbaked, it might collapse. If it's overbaked, we might have a hard time to cut through. It's about time management and the ability for a baker to pivot. That's a tough challenge today. So scary and stressful. Right now I'm working on my cookie butter. Doing that first, look at all that butter. This is a personal trainer's worst nightmare. Another showstopper day. It's my most ambitious bake. Hopefully the show is not gonna stop for me today. <laughs> Loic's ambitious showstopper will include a ladyfinger and raspberry mousse center rimmed with layers of macaron. So it's going to be like a full circle of macaron, then a second full circle of macaron, then a third full circle of macaron, and if I have time, I'll keep going <laughs> to the sky. The layers can be any cookie of their choice. This is my hojicha maple and blonde chocolate dough. It smells so good. And we mean any cookie. This is actually squid ink. It has an umami flavor to it, and it'll render the dough black. As long as the cookie layers can support the fillings. So it's how people feel like. <laughs> Candace hopes to rise to the challenge with a trifle-inspired cookie cake with raspberry and peach shortbread layers. My favorite dessert growing up was trifle, and my mom would make that actually instead of birthday cakes for me. Oh. Uh, and so that, I want to kind of bring those flavors together in a cookie cake form. I'm just portioning out my cookie dough. I'm going to go for height and stop when the time's up. Could be the Eiffel Tower, who knows? Freezer vibes. While the dough's resting, the bakers are doing anything but. Hello, what's this right here? This is an unusual little carrot, and I'm making a quick pickle mm -hmm. out of it, and it's gonna become one of the garnishes on the top. I like this carrot because it's breaking all the fundamental rules of carrots. It's going rogue. Kathy's also going rogue with a savory miso squid ink and wasabi cream cheese cookie cake, topped with cured salmon. I actually cured it myself. It's something that my dad and I used to do together. Every time I make it, I think of him. All righty. Really nice, soft texture. Over 100 macaron shells, no big deal. How's it going, Camila? What are we making? I am making a gigantic macaron. <laughs> so it looks like you really enjoy making macarons. Is that, is that true to say? Yeah, I absolutely love macarons. They're my favorite thing to make. Camila's favorite treat will sandwich her creme diplomat and chocolatey lace cookie layers. So lace cookie, are you not afraid it's too thin and too fragile? Once the tempered chocolate is on top. If um, the chocolate is tempered. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be the size of my cookie. Black. Perfect. Andrew's foot. What the heck? <laughs> I expected everyone to think I'm making a foot cake, but when it's decorated, it will look like a fat, delicious carrot. Andrew's spin on carrot cake will include carrot and coconut cookies and a pineapple jam. It'll be a carrot, I promise. 
giving them little tinfoil hats to protect them from conspiracy theories and browning. <laughs> One, two. My faith is in the oven. You're halfway through, bakers. I am just finishing up my custard, because every trifle has a custard. So I'm just looking for a nice thickness because it's gonna be a filling and I don't want it to seep, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm working on my apple filling that's going inside my cake. I'm just making my brown sugar Swiss meringue. It will only boil if I don't watch it. My um, mother-in-law has these beautiful grape vines on the farm and it makes the best grape jelly. This will be the jelly to Heather's peanut butter cookie in an elevated PB&J cookie sandwich, inspired by her favorite place. I plant in my garden full of like night blooming flowers. That's like my quiet space. The end of the day. Do you have a little midnight snack of peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Of course, of course there's snacking going on. I hope I don't run out of wasabi. This is my maple marcona meringue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Salt, salt, salt. A little bit more. I hate measurements. A rice paper cloak will reveal Renier's tower of cookies with decadent flavors of chocolate, cherry, and Marcona almonds. It's like a cousin of a regular almond, but she's richer. Oh. Oh, yeah, this one went to Yale. I can smell it. Yeah. Oh. Ah, smell the sea. Okay, I'm good with that. They look peachy. <laughs> 10 out of 10 disappointed. I was not able to nail the baking of my macaron. I'm going to take the best that I have, but this is not the level of quality I wanted to achieve today. <laughs> this is warm buttercream. I'm piping my trees and ladders because you need ladders to pick your apples. <laughs> it looks like a dream. Yeah, it is a dream right now. It's a retirement dream. My husband and I, our retirement plan is to own an orchard. Niv pipes her dream into reality with an apple pie inspired cookie cake with layers of hojicha maple and oat cowboy cookies. What's a cowboy cookie? A cowboy cookie is kind of like throw everything together and then eat it. Yeehaw. Cookie. Because <laughs> <laughs> cowboys probably don't have any time, so. <laughs> I am trying to temper chocolate. I'm using a historical casting method for bronze making. And instead of sand and bronze, I'm using tempered chocolate and cocoa powder. Heather is not the only one tempering chocolate. It's actually working pretty well. We'll be the tempering queens. Layer it on real thick. You two bakers, 30 minutes left. So right now it's just a construction project. You can stand on that and it won't compress. <laughs> no. That's not gonna stand. My meringue is collapsing. We're gonna make buttercream now, change of plan. Oh my God, this needs so much strength. Um, it got very stuck. I think I might have undertaken a little bit too much. It's all about salvaging right now. Wow, this is hot buttercream. It's gonna work out so great, no one's gonna notice unless you tell them. Uh... What a day. Oh my God, it's so soft. I don't know what's gonna happen. You have 10 minutes left. Oh, my Lord. Ah. Oh, my God. I'm obsessed with these. Right over that little indiscretion. Does it look rushed? A little bit. Is it going to taste good? Hopefully. It's got layers. Hello. <sighs> OK. I thought this would be a walk in the park. The best macaron on top. I'm trying to defy physics here with a little bit of ice spray. This is my lifeline in this hot tent. Oh, God. Price is semi averted. <laughs> my ladders. No longer afoot. Ah, this one ripped. Can someone help? 
What do you need? Okay. Could you hold this like this? Yeah. Thanks. This is not when you want to be doing at the last possible minute. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that's time, folks. Great job, Bakers. Great job. Bruno and Kyla will now taste the cookie layer cakes. Niv, please bring your showstopper up to the front. Niv, it looks very enchanting and whimsical. It's the orchard we'd all love to retire to. <laughs> I mean, look at it. You can see all the small details on the tree. You've also given us two different kinds of cookies here. So we have miso, hojicha, and maple yeah. cookie. Oh, and look at that filling in there. It's just glistening. That's a perfect balance of cream, cookie, and a bird pie filling. Thank you. Okay, so now our next layer, a cowboy cookie. I just love the name of it. The cookie has a good chewiness to it. Overall, it's a great job. Thank you. Andrew, I just love the definition between your layers. The fact that you pipe the whole top is demonstrating another skill here, but putting little baby carrots on top, it gets a little bit lost. So it's carrot cake all the way through. Huh? All the way through. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the spice in your carrot cookie is really nice. I just find the buttercream a bit too waxy. Okay. Heather, I'm so happy you got to do the tree. I mean, it just, it gives it so much stature and it draws you right into the whole concept. Gets those kind of details that demonstrate just how skilled you are. Oh, thank you. Beautiful contrast of color, very vibrant. Beautiful shine on your homemade jelly. Just be mindful because you have a lot of it coming out at the bottom. Yeah, it tastes like a peanut butter jelly sandwich. It really does. Yeah. Very clean flavors, good texture. And the grape jelly is perfect. Kathy, it's like a seafood offering. I'm just drawn right into your Gravlax roses. It's this beautiful attention to detail that just makes the whole thing come together in a showstopper way. It cuts very easily. Oh, and we even have cucumber on the inside. That's structurally really intelligent. And you've made your own Gravlax? Yes, correct, yeah. This is, wow. Mm. It looks it's like making it. me happy. <laughs> <laughs> the cookies is just supporting all of that goodness, and it was bold to choose savory ingredients. I will even say you're swimming against a trend of sweetness. <laughs> Candice, it does look like trifle. Yeah, you can really see that effect. It's really clear. Now your piping looks a little bit like it was rushed. Uh, fight to the finish. <laughs> the cookies are soft. They took a bit of humidity from the cream and it works very well. It really kept the shortbread texture. Almost perfection in simplicity. Thank you. The graphic design of this is so clever. Beautiful color on the outside. A bit of tone on the top. Everything in the middle mm -hmm. is tasty, yeah. crunchy. Mm -hmm. And there's so much texture happening with that chocolate layer. Amazing job on the, you know, how thin it is. However, macaron, to be on the dry yeah. side. Louis, it's a very inventive presentation, but some of your macarons have some issues on the top. You pick the best one. I've been strategic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When it comes to a design like this, it is quite difficult to cut. Very good flavor for the raspberry mousse. I love the contrast with the lady fingers. The macarons have good flavor. Yeah, texture-wise, I think the macaron just needed more time to rest. Rainier, I don't think we've ever seen a presentation like that. Thank you. And I cannot wait to see the reveal. It's very ceremonious. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, look at all the layers. 
I'm just looking at all of your cake layers, and I think when you do something so dramatic, you want the inside to be absolutely perfect, but your piping is a little bit messy here. The chocolate chip cookie, very nice, good texture. Thank you. The cream, it does start very nicely, mm -hmm. but it's just a bit too salty. Okay. Keeps the drama. Hold on on the salt. I will. <laughs> well noted. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Renier. So last time we chatted, we said there was no room for any unforced errors. Were there any? Andrew and Renier both had issues with their buttercream, and they were also at the bottom of the technical. Niv struggled in the technical yesterday. How did she do with the showstopper? That orchard cookie cake was beautiful and was very tasty. And I think she came in here ready to prove she wants to be in the tent. Now, as far as Star Baker goes, did anyone stack up to the challenge? Kathy really pushed the envelope and it paid off. And Heather brought us right home with that peanut butter and jelly. We'll really have to look at all three challenges. It's a very level playing field. Bakers, wow. This week you showed us that cookies could be canvas, a vessel, and a cake. But one baker in particular took a risk and leveled up to earn this week's Star Baker. That person is... Kathy. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations, Kathy. That's so well deserved. Oh, thanks. I love that for you. Thank you. This also means that another baker must go home. I am sad to say that the person leaving the tent is. Renier. Oh. I miss Having the opportunity to be here is amazing. I've learned so much. Finally, I have bigger friends. All my friends are accountants. Oh, oh my gosh. Let me I'm going to miss you guys. Oh, oh, the I'm so proud of myself for making it this far and I'm really happy I let the other bakers win. <laughs> I'm surprised, of course thrilled. I gotta call my 90-year-old mother. She'll say, what? My dad and I used to cure salmon together, and there was a little bit of him in the tent today when I made that bake. Yeah, it's pretty special. Next time. We're flying by the seat of our aprons. The bakers dig deep. It's a risk. I'm a risk taker. For our first ever harvest week. I have to cut a lot of fruit. A lot, a lot, a lot. Who will cultivate success? This looks like it could be on the cover of a magazine. And 